Today, we're looking at how people are using Sora 2 and providing a prompting guide to get the most out of the new platform. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. One of the challenges with this show is to figure out the balance of technical news, i.e. model updates, new features, new platforms, new ways that people are using these tools, with big picture societal updates, which could include markets or geopolitics, with the more practical stuff, which is how to use and actually get the most out of AI. This, by the way, is why I have that survey going on the website, AIDailyBrief.ai, about what sort of extensions you're most interested in. But regardless, we have definitely been in the big picture macro realm for a little bit, and so I wanted to bring it back to the practical for today's episode. This was inspired by OpenAI dropping their Sora 2 prompting guide on their cookbook website, cookbook.openai, a little earlier this week. I'll include a link to this in the show notes. And what I've tried to do is simplify and consolidate a bunch of the lessons in there to make it more easily digestible for you. All right, so how do you get the most out of this new platform? What are the prompting tips that are going to drive impact for you? A lot of this is coming direct from the horse's mouth. There is a ton of detail in here. I'm not going to try to get to everything. I'm going to try to hit the big picture points in a way that's more accessible. And the first one, I think, is when to know to be open versus descriptive when it comes to your prompts. What I mean by this is that it's our natural instinct, I think, to try to provide the AI a ton of really specific detail to get exactly what we're seeing in our mind's eye out of it. And frankly, figuring out how to do that is going to be a lot of what these tips are about. However, there is also another type of use where you just let the AI be more creative. Sometimes it's going to be valuable, especially if you're not exactly sure what you're trying to get outside of a few key details, to kind of just let the AI do its thing. As OpenAI writes, shorter prompts give the model more creative freedom, and you can expect more surprising results. Now, short prompts can be super short. For example, I just said a fun 1980s educational video explaining reinforcement learning in two sentences, or they can be a little bit more detailed. The example of a short prompt that OpenAI gives is, in a 90s documentary style interview, an old Swedish man sits in a study and says, I still remember when I was young. The reason they say this will work well is that 90s documentary sets the style of the video, old Swedish man sits in a study, describes the subject and setting, but in a minor detail, which, as they say, lets the model take creative liberties. And by giving the dialogue, I still remember when I was young, Sora will be able to follow that exactly. They say that this prompt will reliably produce videos that meet these requirements, but all the stuff that's left out, i.e. the prompt not describing the time of day, the weather, the outfits, the tone, the look, the age of the character, the camera angles, the cuts, the set design, because the prompt doesn't get into those things, they're left to the AI. And the point is that sometimes leaving those things up to the AI is going to produce really wonderful and valuable results that are different than if you had constrained every little thing. Now, let's expand this out a little bit and try to move into a realm that's slightly more detailed. One thing that OpenAI suggests is to think about each shot as its own unit. Basically, they say that you can put multiple shots into a single prompt, especially if you have a sequence of action that needs to happen. But if you do this, think about each shot as a unit. And what does that mean? What's in a unit? A strong unit in a prompt is going to have one of each of the following. First, a style reference. So for example, that one we heard, 90s documentary. From the piece that I showed you before, 1980s educational video. That is the style reference. And I think in a lot of ways, just for getting the model in the ballpark of what you want, this strikes me as one of the most important pieces. So much of video is about the vibe that you're trying to set. And the style reference is a really high impact and shorthand way of helping the AI achieve what you're looking for. Next up, you've got the camera setup, which could be what type of camera it is or where it's framed relative to the subject of the video. One subject action, they recommend that in the context of this one unit, whatever your subject is only has one main action they're taking or one main thing they're doing so as not to overwhelm the unit. That doesn't mean that a single prompt can't have multiple subject actions, but again, they're trying to bundle these things in units that then get added together. Likewise, they suggest no more than one camera move. Now, not every video will have a camera move. In fact, a lot of them don't have a camera move, but it's the same idea. If there is an important move of the camera, just like an important subject action, they suggest only doing one. Lighting recipe, one way the scene is lit, which could be about where the light is coming from, whether it's natural light or something else. And of course, your one dialogue or sound. Sora videos don't have to have talking, although most of them have opted for that, so you can give sound or music cues in addition to just dialogue. I'll show you one example where I didn't have a specific dialogue, but I did by implication have sound instructions. So this is a cheesy 1990 sitcom intro for a show about the awesomeness of fall and Halloween called The Octobers. 
Leaves are falling, nights are bright, candles in the windows light, carving pumpkins, baking pies, costumes bringing big surprise. We're the October's, yeah, we know how to fall. But what if you're saying, look, I like the creativity of AI and all of those things make sense, but I have a vision for something much more comprehensive, either because I'm trying to actually make a short film or maybe because I have really particular requirements where I'm trying to accomplish something for my marketing material, for my product shots. Luckily, OpenAI says that Sora is capable of handling ultra detailed prompts as well. They write, for complex cinematic shots, you can go beyond the standard prompt structure and specify the look, camera setup, grading, soundscape, even shot rationale in professional production terms. This is similar to how a director briefs a camera crew or VFX team. Detailed cues for lensing, filtration, lighting, grading, and motion help the model lock onto a very specific aesthetic. So the example they give has a slew of sections before they get into what's actually happening in the video. They have a format and look section. Digital capture emulating 65mm photochemical contrast. They have a lenses and filtration section, a grade and palette section that gets into the highlights, mids, and blacks, a lighting and atmosphere section that's separate from that, natural sunlight from camera left, low angle, a location and framing section that has the general urban commuter platform at dawn, and then a breakout for foreground, midground, background. They also importantly have negative prompts here, avoid signage or corporate branding. Then the last two are wardrobe props and extras describing the characters and people who are going to be in the video, and finally the sound. And that's all before you get to the shot list, which again, this is a four second video. You'll note that with this shot list, it is not just the sequence, they're also giving it timing. This is something that I'm starting to see a lot on Twitter slash X as people share their best results, is that providing a shot list with specific timestamps really helps the model adhere to what you're going for. Finally, they have a few additional camera notes and how to finish up but this is the level of complexity that you can get to. Now, one suggestion that I would have if you want to get to this level of ultra detailed, I would take this sample, feed it into GPT-5 thinking, ask it to create a general template, and then ramble describe using words what I wanted to accomplish with a video and let it fill in all these details. So for example, let's say that I was trying to mimic this, but as is the case in reality, I had no idea about things like lighting but I could still describe roughly the type of atmosphere that I wanted or allow the AI to just infer it from my broader ramble about what I was trying to go with overall. Let it figure out what the bounce is going to look like. I think that that's a way that you can use AI to help with the prompting itself. So basically when it comes to Sora, you have a full range of options. You can go from extremely loose and letting the AI get creative to extremely detailed, just based on the use case that you're trying to explore. My guess is that for a lot of use cases, something in the middle, where you follow this type of unit structure with a style reference, a camera setup, a subject action, a camera move, an approach to lighting and a dialogue or sound, is going to be the right balance that gets really close adherence to what you're looking for, but also some amount of creative flexibility for the AI to take you in directions that you might not have expected. Two big keys that I wanted to pull out that ran throughout the prompting guide, and which also have been relevant in my own prompting, First of all, it really does feel like style matters and is going to get you a pretty far away into adherence with what you're looking for. Think about the style and the vibe that you're trying to set carefully because so much can follow from that. And secondly, to the extent that you do have a vision in mind, basically what OpenAI's Sora 2 prompting guide is telling us is that there is no such thing as too much specificity. Be specific, tell it what you want, and see what happens next. I am super excited to see what you guys all create with Sora 2. For now, that's going to do it for this episode. Appreciate you listening as always. And until next time, be safe and take care of each other. Peace.